entrepreneurs and professionals of Tampa Bay. Welcome to your hour for getting the information, the tools, and the connections for elevating your business. Welcome to Getting the Edge with Kelly Wilson. And here's your host, Kelly Wilson. Welcome to Getting the Edge. I'm your host, Kelly Wilson. Thank you so much for being here today. I always say I know you could be a million other places. So the fact that you chose to be here and take some time uh, to get the edge uh, with me today uh, means a lot to all of us. So thank you so much. Uh, Getting the Edge is in our seventh year now. It's a, it's a one hour informative, uh, inspiring conversation uh, with with amazing business leaders uh, and, and community uh, members that, that share their story. I'm a firm believer that we can learn so much from each other. And if we all just take the time to share our stories, uh, one of my, my favorite quotes is Henry Ford, if we're all moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. Surprising that it's one quote I don't mess up often. But anyway, um, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Edge, uh, Getting the Edge is brought to you by Edge Media Hub. Uh, check out edgemediahub.com for more information. To be a guest or to contact uh, any of our uh, previous guests on the show, you can reach out and email us at info at edgemediahub.com. I'd love to thank our Getting the Edge sponsors. We wouldn't be here without you. So thank you so much to Urban E-Recycling. Uh, no charge, a pickup for your data destruction, any of your electronics, they'll come by and grab it for you. Uh, so www, uh, or urban e recyclingcom uh, for more information. Thank you to WeBeam TV as well. Uh, also, thank you to our Edge Platinum Partners. Uh, again, we wouldn't be here without you. All Trust Insurance, Pilot Bank, USF Muma College of Business, and the amazing Visit Tampa Bay. Thank you so much. Total access uh, for Edge Media Hub begins with our annual partnerships. Right now, we're offering a 50% off all of our, our three uh, major uh, levels of partnership. There are many benefits uh, from being a guest here on the show to being a contributing writer for the magazine, uh, from our uh, digital magazine to even our, our new resource library. There's so much content and so much information and so many ways to learn and grow. Uh, and in really, there it, it's all from and about uh, community leaders right here in our area. So again, for more information, check out edgemediahub.com. I'm so excited. I'm always excited. But our second annual celebration of women is is in the works. Production has started. We announced our 10 trailblazing, uh, amazing women uh, honorees that are included. So that information is also on the website. This is Edge's most anticipated issue of the year. And we are looking forward to a another magical launch with this one. Everybody live and in person, giving hugs. We can't wait. Uh, well, most likely uh, it'll be closer to the end of the summer or early fall before we're able to really come together and, and bring 400 people together the way the way we'd like to. So, uh, but stay tuned and you can subscribe, just stay up to date with all of the Edge stuff or just be here with us every week. And you can always uh, check out and watch all of the previous Getting the Edge shows on our website. I think uh, there there's hundreds of shows. So, so definitely um, grab some popcorn and, and, and notepad and, and enjoy yourself. So again, I am just, I'm honored and just, um, I'm just so thankful to be here with you every week and share stories from amazing people in our community. And this one, uh, my guest today is is very special and, and close to my heart. I'm excited to get to know her. We had not had the opportunity of meeting before now. Um, we did just get them involved in EDGE recently as uh, new members, community members, our partners of our EDGE uh, hub. But uh, they, Allison Fonseca, you say that right, kind of? Yep. Uh, Co-owner with, with her husband for Station House Barbecue. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You know, so to share our story, uh, uh, many of you might know that right after the holidays, actually the day after Christmas, my son, Zach, and his family lost their home due to an apartment fire. A neighbor below them was grilling on a wood balcony. Yeah, that's what happened. And unfortunately, they lost they lost everything and did not have renter's insurance, and which as many people probably do not. And it was just a nightmare situation. And thank God they were not home. And um, ultimately, I think we talk about this a lot on the show, but even through very tough situations, you shall prevail. And there are opportunities of, of major growth and advancement and good things can happen. But one of the good things that happened out of that was meeting you 
So you. you have um, the big one of the biggest hearts. You, you know, you work so much like all of us. You know, you're you're trying to you're running a business, but yet you're so giving. And uh, so through the process of uh, my son works for Hillsborough County. He's a 911 uh, dispatch operator for uh, it's uh, how do they say is it? What's the name of Hillsborough County Fire Rescue? Yes, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue. So uh, in, the, in the county is but they were amazing. All of you uh, through through um, this process of once they heard what happened to my son and his family as a, a community that sticks together for sure. And uh, wow, we couldn't believe all the everyone that came out. So Station House Barbecue, your husband now is he? He's a firefighter, correct? Yes. So, yes. but but it's still it's all one and the same. It's yep. everybody. It's one big family. Whether you're yep. on the fire team or that you're on the phones or it's they're all supporting each other. Absolutely. And it's an amazing an amazing family. I've seen that. My brother uh, was a, like road bikes. You know, you know a bikeling like world like mm -hmm. you know competitively and. It was amazing to see that camaraderie of the, mm -hmm. the bikers, you know, on the bicycles all come together. But it's kind of that similar yes. world. I don't even my son made the comment, you know, I didn't even realize what I was a part of. Aww. And and you, you don't, I think, yeah. I guess, until something maybe bad happens where you see then everybody coming together. OK, so long story short, I'm still telling the story. So Allison <laughs> and I, Al, you had reached out to me. I, I created a GoFundMe page. We weren't sure how my son was going to recover from this mm -hmm. after losing everything. And I do have two amazing, my favorite two little people, uh, my, my grandchildren. So I'm, I'm going to get emotional if I bring them up. So we're not going to do that anyway. Long story short, you'd reached out and offered to help coordinate anything and even yep. and do some of your own fundraisers. And let me just say, I, I you know, thank you. <laughs> you know, just all the coordinating. I couldn't believe all the people that that reached out that we didn't even know that that were reaching out and it was so much love. Um, and again, I, you know, sometimes it takes something bad to happen for you to realize all the good that's in the world and all the love that really does exist because we can get overwhelmed with all the negativity if you allow it. And we talk about that a lot on the show too, but um, you were just one of those. And I don't even think we had a phone conversation. It's all been via text, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, you're located in land Lutz, the Lutz, Lutz area mm -hmm. and one, six, three, one, nine, right? Yep, North, North Florida, Florida Avenue. Avenue. I think I've written that so many <laughs> times, um, but, and you've got a unique concept as well there. It's, it's actually like a fire truck. Right. Or yes. it's so tell us I'll stop talking. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about fire, um, firehouse barbecue. And and then we'll kind of get back into the behind the story of, of how it came from. But All tell right. us what it is today. Well, in about uh, 2015, my husband was asked by one of his rookies to cook for his wedding. So he and his captain and the rest of the station um, all chipped in and catered their rookie's wedding. So we pull up thinking that we're going to pull into like someone's like backyard thinking if you ask your friends to cater for you, but it was in like a full blown wedding venue. So the lady, by the end of the night, we'd gotten to know her. She tasted our food. She loved it. She said, you absolutely have to do this for real. And they're like, we already have full time jobs. And she's like, I'm going to get you a bride. And so she did. So six months later, she's we started get catering you a, what? a bride. Oh, wow. Yep. A bride. She booked us a bride. Yes. What does that mean? Like a bride? So that we could cater her wedding. Oh. Yeah, to become caterers for real. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we started catering, and by uh, May of 2016, she had booked us our first bride, and um, Anthony and his captain catered for many years together, and then his captain retired, so we bought his captain out, and then we stumbled across fire sta um, station house barbecue the fire engine smoker and it was awesome and so we just wanted to go see it never dreaming we'd buy it you know okay so that was <laughs> it was a smoker that you yes found, but it was like a replica of it's a converted old... fire engine it's a 93 spartan and it was in service in texas and one of our customers our guests actually found it in use and sent us a picture of it so that was really neat to see but yeah on it there's smokers there's ovens um grills fry Fires. We put in refrigerators, a freezer, so that we would be able to just go anywhere with it. It would be like a mobile oh. catering beast. So that's what it is. It's, yeah. Oh, I see. So you don't just show up when you cater. No, like, we show up. You show up. <laughs> wow. Right. I, I had no idea. That is clever. Yeah. The on-site cooking was really taking mm. off, and then COVID hit. So we had to get mm. creative. And we luckily had a food trailer that we used prior to owning Station House Barbecue that we would cook out of all day long on-site and do the whole thing. Um, and so we started selling out of that, um, like retail, and then it turned into... There's a lot of people coming. We, we should just go ahead and use this retail space that we had rented to be our catering headquarters and make it into a restaurant. So that's what we did um, in October. 
And just this past year? No, yes. How, really? 2019 is when we bought okay. Station House Barbecue. Had it going for like six months and then right. COVID hit. So that kind of nixed all the on-site cooking and stuff like that. The, the needs for that were definitely down. So we just cooked in our area there and used our catering headquarters kitchen and kind of started a to-go joint. And then it turned into, we're going to go ahead and make it into a restaurant because COVID didn't look like it was going anywhere. Right. And so that's what happened. And then we were able to, at that point, really get dig into the community because then we were, we became a hub for many different things like for zach yes. lots of people dropped off donations and but money be, and everything know, and that is you oh my not to mention <laughs> that i mean we had the gofundme page thankfully we were we raised over thirty one thousand dollars. thank you to so many that was awesome uh, so many of you have touched my heart and many of you know would know exactly i mean uh, it it has there are quite a I, I'm speechless. I mean, no words can really describe how, how I feel with, with all of it. We raise a lot of money, we receive a lot of gifts, very personalized gifts for the for the kids and, and my favorite little people. So, and not to mention, you know, you being a hub, you collecting all the gifts and being that, um, that, that stop for people. Um, and I mean, literally, one of my favorite stories is the woman that drove uh, Linda from yes. Clearwater oh. that was going through chemotherapy and did not feel comfortable coming into the restaurant because of germs and right. and you know we arranged for you to meet her outside but drove from Clearwater to Lutz to mm -hmm. drop off gifts for a family that she doesn't know yeah. and then I, you know I, as i talked to these people i realized that you know it, it this i was i was doing this for them i mean this was something that was so important to them and and doing that that you know it it, it was for them and oh it, yeah, again, speechless doesn't happen very often, but um, I'm just so thankful. So again, long story short, you it'll also, make your heart explode. <laughs> you also raised money and yep. um, and you know, over a thousand dollars or so, yeah. and and not to mention all the gifts. And we're just right. so thankful. And oh, it's our pleasure. I, you know, I couldn't wait to get you here and really <laughs> show you off and highlight you. Thank you. And and talk about you know they've got a great website by the way, and all the website information uh, will be on on the screen. But um, you know, great, great concept and Thank just you. great people. And, yeah. and I think that's really what we're about is, yeah. you know, with edge, our number one goal is to, uh, to really connect the community to the humanity, the heart and yeah. soul of, of what you stand for and what we as business owners stand for, because behind every business is a family and a concept and a person, you know, that, that, uh, created that culture. So, um, anyway, they have a great website, so check it out. And Thanks. now that I know you don't just show up and cater, I mean, you actually, now you, we so, still get to sometimes, right? But, but, but not I mean, as much in as a before. truck, I mean, you're not just coming right. up, you know, in your, in your cars and your, but, oh no, uh, we bought an ambulance, um, to be like a box truck that a catering, you know, instead of like mm -hmm. a catering van, you'd have a, like a box truck. So why not get an ambulance? That's a perfect size. So we show up a lot of times in that. And so that kind of alerts people, gets them excited. And then um, we also have another fire engine too. So um, we had bought that right before COVID hit. So um, we're working up slowly to getting it like fitted out to become another mobile catering beast. But right now it sure I is a lot it. of fun. Mobile catering beast. Yes. I like absolutely. it. I like it. You refer to it as I a beast. I pull up to like their um, birthday parties with it. And the cab is still all the seats are there and intact. And we haven't put like refrigerators and and freezers in there yet so the kids can still kind of play around in it and they will just like go to town so it's been like a real treat to be able to share with people and make them smile oh absolutely mm -hmm. and i you know even in, t in the anticipation of seeing their faces as yes. you know once you pull up and yeah. and then they see and i think you know the the, the people have a lot to do with that. You have a lot to do with that. I mean, and it's the personality and you're connecting, you know, yeah. with, with all, everyone. And even as they come in and I, and I can see how, how you'd be building relationships. And, you know, I can only imagine how difficult it must be to have started a business, right? You know, nobody knew COVID was coming right. and looming around the corner, you know, so obviously I'm sure it's been difficult, but, yeah. you know, you, you obviously are staying course, you know, you, you're, Absolutely. but, you know, obviously I'm sure you've had to pivot and, and just make adjustments, but in any business, that's what, that's what we have to do it, but we can never, and, and I think that's one thing that probably, uh, if anything, this has taught us is, uh, just to be prepared for the inevitable. I mean, just, I mean, the inevitable, the unthinkable, I guess. Yeah. Uh, because what did somebody say on the show once? Like have a, have a crisis plan for your crisis crisis. <laughs> you know, it's just anyway, but I can only imagine. So any tips on well, like how you've like yeah. survived and just, and I can imagine too, your husband and wife, this has got to be 
um, just challenging as a couple. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to build a business together. I mean, relationships are tough enough as yeah. they are than to try to like build a business and, and grow. Any tips on like how? Yeah, you know, here's my biggest tip. I owe it, I owe it all to God. He's go. carried us through all of us and all we want to be. We're on fire for Jesus. We want to be his hands and feet here on earth. And we want to spread his love, peace, and joy in any way that we can. Yeah. And if food is the way to do it, then food is the way to do it. Yeah. But we're here for anything else. Yeah, and I think that is the mindset mm -hmm. that that it, that is will, will you will definitely that yeah. that'll take you. Anthony to where you need started to go. this business praying to God. Um, if I ever lose sight of you, take it away from me. Mm. And so he has it and we're on it and we love him and we honor him in everything that we do. You know, and we're, we're all, I think we all have a story. We're all dealing with something. We're all going through something. You know, we, you're a mother as well. You have two little ones, right? Just one. Just one. Okay. <laughs> How old? She's almost five. Almost five. She's as old as the catering company. <laughs> oh, I see. You know, but it, you know, being a mom and being a wife and, you know, you were a teacher too, mm -hmm. you're in education. So, yep. you know, but being the these, uh, you know, it's you were pulled in so many different directions yeah. and then running a business on top of that and then being yeah. able to, um, you know, uh, just keep everybody mm -hmm. optimistic and positive. It's and, certainly and, challenging. And in that, I guess, frame of mind, like yeah. you just said, you know, that that you're here for a reason and you keep your priorities straight and everything right. else will fall into place. Right. Most definitely. Yeah. So uh, tell me about your teaching then. So, okay. okay what, well, let's just, where are you from originally? Tampa. Are We're you? both from Tampa. We decided on the first date. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving. Okay, we'll get married. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So how many years now? Yep. Uh, 13 years. Oh, wow. Yep. So what high school did you go to? Um, I went to King. Okay. And he went to um, Temple Heights. It was a Christian school that's closed now. But I went to King for nine weeks. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I wasn't there nice. long, but it was, it was you know, an experience when I first yes. moved here and then ended up moving back. But, yep. um, you know, it's interesting. I just... Uh, having fun doing all my, uh, we talked about the second annual celebration of women. So I'm, we're interviewing and going through all that. So I was with Pam Iorio, our former Tampa mayor, uh, her interview uh, Tuesday, I think. And, um, but she went to King awesome. and we were talking about King high school and just how it was when yeah. she was there <laughs> and how it was when I was there that I briefly experienced <laughs> that I sent me back to up North to finish high school. But, um, but it's interesting. And again, so many, I love, just love the stories, but okay. So King and then, so yeah. what did you want to do when you did you, you want to, you know you wanted to be in education no I actually I thought I was going to be in dance and then I found out um I went to FSU for it over and everything I wanted to be in musical theater but I found out you really have to be able to sing and I am not there <laughs> so I quickly switched to education <laughs> USF has a great program so okay, I you transferred can't just back dance, home you have to sing too yeah well I wanted to do musical theater I wanted to do it all oh, but, I, uh, okay. I was not I did not have all it, the so years of experience and training my voice like I needed to have <laughs> I see. <laughs> and that's okay. So then you did what then? So what did you just I say? I went into education. Oh, education. Yep. And I transferred to USF, my hometown, and go Bulls. And I loved <laughs> it. And uh, um, I uh, ended up teaching at Lato. Okay. At, yeah, Lato High School is right by the airport. And I absolutely loved that. So what grade, what did you teach I, there? Almost every time I taught ninth grade all day, okay. every day. <laughs> so like any specific? English. Oh, English. English, okay. yes. And I was, that was exceptionally challenging because um, Leto has got a very diverse yes. population. Um, so we had just the most fun we could with it. It was fantastic. I fell in love with the kids and eventually started teaching teachers. And so I started working for the college board. And that's where I was at the beginning of the pandemic. I was in New York in their office training a local group of New York City teachers how to use the springboard program. And I came home um, in a rush, washing my hands like crazy, and people were starting to wear mask and everything and I was like what's going to happen now so um, I haven't been training any more teachers since then but it's actually good because I was able to be more hands-on for Anthony and our, our station house barbecue so I, I didn't realize you're still in are you still in there oh, now yeah, um, uh, yeah I, 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 I love consulting for them okay yeah, I love I had... going around the world and teaching teachers it's wonderful I, I mean can teachers are they're fun. Um, they can be a handful. I can, well, I can imagine. If you can imagine they're that. They're probably uh, but, very stuck in their ways, yes. I would think. So. And I'm the girl who comes in and tells them, you have a whole new curriculum. You can do this. But we take, you know, it's usually a three-day thing, and we get dig into it, and I share my experiences, and we all get kind of raw and, and just say, you know, like what we need to do and make our, our goals and, and set, you know, those those destinations and go for it and, and leave feeling good. 
So yeah, yeah that's yeah. really cool. <laughs> so that that's interesting. How I mean, you obviously didn't know that that's where you'd end up in the no. education field. <laughs> you started with ninth grade at right. least, so, you know. But <laughs> but you know, obviously, uh, working hard and then yep. being recognized for being able. Uh, that that's very cool. Thank you. So I can see how you'd be really good at that too. Thank and you. Just... And I didn't I didn't say no to dancing. I when I came home, I started teaching dance. So I got to teach ballet, tap, and jazz for many many years, and acrobatics and everything else. And then I got into partner dancing. So I was like very big into that and swing dancing and salsa dancing, ballroom dancing, all of it. And I started teaching that too. So that was super fun. Oh. And I'm I can't wait for those to really open back up. Because oh my, that's a great like, outlet. Okay, I'm like worn out just from this conversation. Okay, so <laughs> it, like she's a mom, mom, right? Mom, and now a consultant, and you're running mm. the the restaurant, and you're a wife, and now you're dancing too, and you're teaching dancing. Yep, I, I, I did did energy. all of that. Yeah, yep, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I'm just the the restaurant and the mom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and the community caregiver because I love yes, my guests so much. I get so excited when I see them, and then I hear that they're sad when I'm not there. So I'm like, I want to be there. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. yeah. So and you're open Monday through uh, Tuesday Saturday. through Saturday. Tuesday through okay. Yep. So you're only off sun out Sundays and Mondays. Right. right. And Sundays we're starting to dedicate that to community outreach. So like last Sunday for a fellow firefighter, um, we did a big old parade in front of his house. He was at the end of a three-year battle with brain cancer. Oh. And uh, yeah, so we got, um, there was an Enthusiast for Hope, a group out there with like super cool cars. And then also yes. Pasco County Fire Department jumped in and they had like 12 of their rescue vehicles out there. And it was just like, I cried the whole way to the parade following them, oh knowing that goodness. I was in a rescue vehicle too and that they knew that I loved them. And it was just amazing. And then everyone went back to Station House Barbecue and we raised a bunch of money for them. I love it. And just, I can only imagine how that made him feel, right? That, yeah. I mean, and seeing and being a part of that and yeah. knowing. Well, it was yeah. all about making memories for his wife and his daughter to have with him while he was still here. So, yeah, it was an amazing day. And we had done previously a, another fundraiser for them. Um, the same family, and it went swimmingly. I mean, everyone, th as soon as you tell the fire folks, like with Zach, Anthony actually had reached out to him on Messenger before I reached out to you, and he told me about it one night, and I was like, why did you tell me about this sooner? And he said, well, I sent him a message, and I was like, well, I'm sending his mom a message. Yeah, and I doubt he <laughs> ever I got responded. Right to you. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. he didn't, yeah. so that's why I, I knew, you know, like, you're not going to go straight to that person. You need to go to the people around them and see what they know and, and how we can help, and then we can get through to oh, and oh, and the center and make it happen. And a lot of times, too, if you go direct, they're going to say, I'm fine. I don't yeah, need anything. Of course. You know, because and, and I think that, you can't blame them. They're in shock, you know. And and I, I know even with my son, that was one of the toughest things for him was just that all these people are coming out and offering to give, you know, and you you, you just yeah. you feel you feel about taking and you don't right. want to take from others that that can need to right. and, and you, that you are feel like you have right. to in some way pay it back. And, and oh, it's not about it. that. It's about just like living together and going through it together and being one and serving, you know, a bigger purpose. And that's what I think, uh, you know, paying it forward. And just mm -hmm. that's what I told, even told my son. It, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, nobody. There's no expectations. Everybody right. just wants to help. But I yeah. think this all helped transition us into our thinking and what we can do going forward. And I will say, I am a single mom. I've been on my own with, with my businesses and, and supporting a team for a decade now. But so, and I try to give where I can. I, I you know, I have media and different opportunities and outlets. So I try to work with nonprofits and, mm -hmm. and do that way. But, uh, you know, and it's been difficult because I am the only source of income for myself. Mm -hmm. And I've gone through what I have, what I have for the last decade. You do not live frivolously. You don't take any, you know, nothing for granted and you're always careful. So it's been really difficult for me to give from a financial standpoint to a lot of things because I'm so worried, you know, when you go through periods of not being able to eat or feed your kids, you know, yes. which a lot of business owners do early on without support. And, and I've experienced it, which is one of the reasons I'm so um, such an advocate for crazy people like me, which I joke about all the time. But, um, you know, it, it's just it's just crucial to have, yeah. you know, those those key people and mm -hmm. anyway so you know again it's people like you that, uh -huh. that stand up and right back at you oh no it's it i i i have learned that it i can do ten dollars twenty dollars you know so that throughout this yeah. this process of the donations everything adds up and even these smaller donations ten dollars fifteen dollars uh it, it was amazing to see and it adds up and these you know they 
you know, they could be giving their last $10. Anyway, that, that was yeah. a big eye opener for me because I, I can do that. I, and yeah. I think the, we can't look out like what we put out doesn't come back. It, it does, right. you know, it, and, but I think too, we get there when we get there. And I say that about everything. And, um, I think sometimes when we do go through hard times, it's almost like PTSD in a mm -hmm. sense, you know, where we, we've lived with such conditions that, that, we're still there. There's still mentally. a lot of COVID PTSD because oh. I was terrified at the beginning of it. So, I mean, anytime that like we have one day that sales are low or whatever, you know, you feel that right. coming back to you, like, are we going to be able to make it? And it's like, we have to think bigger and say, you know, it's not about the one day at a time. It's about like, what are you doing this for and keep doing it yeah. and it will, it will happen. Because it, so. it, it will, you will keep going back to yep. that spot after you deal with things. And, and, but you know, that is also the, the key to getting through things and being able to reflect yeah. back a little bit. Once you get to a certain point, and, and even in our latest tribute issue, there were so many great articles, almost, well, just about every business owner we featured, they had a moment during yeah. their career where they pretty much, they, they hit bottom and then they, they, they found their way. It happens to everyone, yeah. most, mostly. I mean, it, it's just so common, uh, you know, and that's why people always say it's not about how many times you get knocked on your butt. It's about how many times you continue to get back up. So, uh, and I think sometimes, you know, we, we create a business plan and we think, Oh, I'm going to just follow this. And, th and that's where that'll take me to where I need to be. And, and uh, a plan is just a plan. Yep. Obviously it, it, we have to have them. They're crucial because they give us something to, to follow right. and to uh, compare where we're at and where we should be and, you know, data and what forth. But um, anyway, um, and there's no, it's definitely a, a, a curvy road. Yes. There's no straight line. It sure there. is. Yeah. Yep. So, but you know, it's interesting to taking a little bit of what you've learned from everything and, and kind of applying it to who you are now and who you'll become. And, and I think there's still yeah. so much. Well, more. it's also interesting to look at the connections that are made throughout each oh, interaction yeah. and each experience. Like right now, I never dreamed I'd be like on a talk show right now. This is exciting. I can't even stand it. I don't know what to do with myself. No, you're so and I'm funny. Like, oh my gosh, You've just been... because I texted this lady, it's awesome. <laughs> so, you know, you never know where it's gonna go. Another big connection that has been just such a blessing for us is been able to bless the local food pantry. We reached out when we found out about a food pantry opening up in Land O'Lakes, we're like, yeah. So we called him and we're like, we're gonna bring you meals every week. And he's like, okay. And since then we've just been like, family. It's been amazing. And all the different people they help, they started helping food pantries that we've helped in the past. And now they're all friends. And, you know, it's just like such a community that it just inspires me to just keep pushing and yeah. give more and more and more as much as I can so that everyone else is affected, like by God's love and just like spreading it everywhere and just giving wherever you can, taking when you need and just loving above all. And that is, uh, you know, that's awesome. And, and you can feel it, you know, even being Thank around you. you or talking with you. And, you know, even my son had mentioned when he stopped in, you know, just <laughs> he could feel it when he walked in. And uh, I live in South Tampa. So, you know, uh, we, we have, it's, it's rough getting north. Yeah. Uh, we always joke, you know, crossing <laughs> Kennedy. I never really understood that. I, cause I did live north, but anyway, been south for many years, but it is difficult. I mean, it, oh, yep. it's, it's always still a challenge trying to to get further up 275. Right, or, traversing or, the county. I mean, there's so many different things pulling us in all different directions. It's, it's hard to like just get out and go. Like I try to just drive around in the fire engine as much as I can, just yeah. you know, tell people we're here and I'll get someone to follow me in the ambulance and just make a little stink around town. But it's hard to do that. It's hard to like walk away and just start doing that. And so. Well, and I, you know, I was joking with my daughter on the way in this morning. Everything I do is right here in my little yep. circle, everything. And, and in fact, now that I'm not tied to a particular school district, I've thought about moving to the beach, you know, you or because I don't have to be by a particular school, but I'm just not sure. Yeah. And then, you know, again, everything I do is right here, downtown Hyde Park area, <laughs> South Tampa. So I don't know, but I do love that area up there and it is, you. Um, you know, uh, quiet and yeah. so much conservation and, you know, well, we knew we'd it. have challenges because we didn't rent it as a restaurant. We originally thought it would be our catering headquarters. And then we'd send it and it was like pretty close to Tampa Bay that you could just send it anywhere within the, the region and be centrally located. But then once COVID hit, we realized we're not going to get the catering gigs to be able to make the rent. So we started filling out a food truck. Lots of people came to it. There are lots of people here. Let's make it a restaurant. Well, and you're like right on the northern or I guess southern tip of Lutz. So it yeah. it doesn't because uh, I mean, Lutz actually goes quite a far further yes. north. But you're yeah, right. Yeah, Lutz is huge. Yeah, all we're that. just outside of Carrollwood. Yeah. 
So that that makes yeah, it a little bit more convenient. Sure. And actually quite I, I lived in Carrollwood for years when I sold real estate in my former life because it seems like I was so essentially located. I mean, because yeah. you could really go north, south, east, yep. west. I mean, depending on which way you had to go. Our first townhouse was in Carrollwood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it is a great area as well. And, I know, yeah. you know, I know obviously COVID happens and, mm -hmm. and we all kind of pivot and we've talked a lot about that. Uh, Great to be back in the studio, though, because yes. for a while we had to transition to virtual shows, and it's just not as fun. And and then the delay in your ears yes. and in trying to, uh, yeah, it has. It's great, I think, because it's given us opportunity, and I think it will continue to kind of um, yeah. be open, right, open, yeah. right. Uh, but but still, it's great to be back in the Absolutely. studio and in person. So yeah. as you begin to recover and not recover, but I guess figure things out because you're yeah. still new. And then yep. again, you have a plan, but then something happens like COVID mm -hmm. and then you have to kind of switch up your thinking. You know, where would you ultimately like to see the business go? Oh, everywhere. Yeah. I want us to have a station house barbecue all over the world. Yeah. And I want everybody to taste Anthony's fantastic recipes. I mean, he's a great chef. So where did the recipes come from? Are oh, they... years and years of experience and, and all the people he's worked with at the fire stations throughout the years. Um, he, he can tell you funny stories about them picking on him when they he used to be the rookie and they'd make him cook every meal. And they knew what he should be doing, but they let him mess up and then got to pick on him after that. And they had a ball doing that. Um, but he's picked up so much knowledge along the way. I mean, he's constantly studying it. And um, his former partner loved cooking as well. So they got all kinds of stuff going. That they built a really good thing. And then when we found Station House Barbecue for sale, it was just like kismet. You had to right. do it, you know? Yeah, it, it, that is yeah. quite the coincidence. It's perfect. I know. And it very is. fitting. Yeah. So, and I think it would probably be turning your passion. You know, we, again, we talk about this a lot, is turning passions into, you know, uh, your purpose. Yes. Right, yeah. Kind of... We t Yes. And, and yeah. living the truth of, yeah. of what we're supposed to be doing. And yeah. so it took some time. It's not like Anthony knew immediately, no. you know, and <laughs> I think it probably takes some pushing, you know, from others. Yes. And, and which thankfully, you know, we, you, he had people around him cheerleading yeah. him and kind of praising yeah. him that you could do this. We're both so lucky that our parents are so available and hands on and supportive in every way possible. Uh we're just so lucky and blessed to to be able to call on them for anything. They'll do it, you know, and they'll yeah, yeah. they'll do whatever they need to 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 make sure that we're succeeding. And so that's why it's so important to us to continue to make sure that others feel the love too because we got, we're so lucky that we got to feel that and I just I won't stop until, you know, I've I've touched and 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 made ex the expression of love to every single person that I can. Oh, well, you're very lucky. I bet, you know, speak, I, my both yes. my parents are gone. So yeah. having, you know, mm -hmm. having that um I can only imagine and I tell people all the time that, you know, I might hear that don't, you know, they don't I don't think spend enough time with family that way, you know, or they're right. like, you know, I don't want you to regret you got that. Why you can, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No matter how much they might drive you crazy at that point, you know, at some point. But yeah, no, you're very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So your daughter's five now and is, Almost. you know, is she uh, working with you in the station? She loves um greeting the customers and we have our own in-house pastry chef now so that's her favorite part of the restaurant is making or baking with chef cynthia she loves to bake with her and like take all the different things that they made together and put it on the line and showcase it and, and make videos she loves advertising for station house barbecue the last video she made we were in the car together and she was just eating the pulled chicken she's like this is so delicious and it was anthony's pulled chicken and i was like can i turn the video camera on she's like okay and so it didn't come out like how she was doing it but she still was like this is delicious. You need to come to Station House Barbecue. I love it. I'll see you there. You're gonna get me hungry. It was hysterical. And and I, I turned it off. I said, why do you make these videos for me? Like, you're so good at it. I appreciate you. You know, I'm like having this like full on talk with my four year old. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, because it makes you happy. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's blowing my mind. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so she loves being a part of it too. Yeah. Well, and they, they all feel the love. And, yeah. and you can tell that, you know, it, do you have, are you plan on more children? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. So yeah. how, how barbecue often? Babies. Barbecue babies. Barbecue babies. <laughs> well, and, you know, I was looking at the web again. The, I was, I did, I really like the website. You talk, because you. you actually go into, um, I mean, it's just creative too, even the words that you used. Um, where was the one? Let's try to see. Okay, I can't find it now. I'll find it in a minute. But, um, Oh, well, let's just go. You've been Best Barbecue Tampa Bay. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the things you've been nominated for recently. 
oh, all kinds of stuff. People are all, always reaching out. Um, our our biggest pride and joy right now, though, is the smoking Cuban. We okay. make a delicious Cuban with our signature sweet guava barbecue sauce. And it's so much fun because we're both Cuban. We both grew up in Tampa and guava is like a staple here. So to get to introduce that to different people who normally wouldn't have, especially being right on the cusp of Tampa, is really a treat. Oh, wow. Yeah, we went to the Cuban Sandwich Festival when I was pregnant with Bella, actually, um, in 2016. <laughs> and that was our first try at it. And we sold Cubans to people all day long. We entered the competition. We got to feel for it. And from there, we were kind of hooked. And we just knew that we would need to, like, do something with the food business. And yeah. then it turned into mainly barbecuing and making that really rockin'. Well, and it definitely looks like y you've done that. Yeah. What... Um... And you even have sweets, like, which isn't typical, right? right? In a, yeah, right. it, it all sounds so He loves good. baking, too. I mean, Anthony will make you a, a flan cake any day you ask him to. He loves it. He, he loves cookies. We, we have on our menu rookies cookies. One of his rookies, Hathaway, actually, um, makes fabulous cookies. So we've tried to kind of capture his recipes. And, you know, and then when we had the opportunity to introduce a pastry chef to our staff, it was awesome. And she just, like took it and ran with it. And she's just been so like uh, dedicated yeah, to like, meeting our I, needs. I would and think sweets. having a pastry chef like at a barbecue restaurant. I know, is she's not got normal. her own corner and area and fridge and everything. And you can see her through the glass, like just making the magic happen. And she makes this fantastic caramel sauce that I just want to put on mm. all the desserts. Mm. <laughs> I love, so I've, so we don't just serve barbecue. We are barbecue. That's right. Like, I like that. that Thank you. Yeah. That, and, and we love everything about barbecue, the food, the culture, the camaraderie, the way it brings people together to have a good time, the good it does when it's shared with the community. Yep. I mean, these, you know, that's why we take such pride in making our barbecue the best it can be. And that's yeah. why we spread the spirit of barbecue every chance we get. I'd I be remiss that. if I didn't shout out to the man who built Station House Barbecue, Joshua Paul, and his wife, Bianca. They're awesome. He's the one that when the man, uh, the first guy to make the um, fire engine smoker, he made it for um, a bunch of farmers, and then they contracted someone else. So he was expecting to feed like 3,000 people a day and needed something huge. So he went with the fire engine. Then they contracted something else, and he's like, I just made this fire engine smoker. I don't I don't have even the money to pay myself back for doing it. Right. Called Joshua. He bought it from him, made it into Station House BBQ, and then an opportunity came up for him, one of his lifelong dreams, to build um, a recovery center in Nicaragua. So he put it on the market. That's where we found it. We met him. He's like, you're Christian and you're actually a fireman. He almost fell out of his seat. He's like, we're staying. We're, I'm, I'm staying on. We're making this affordable. We're going to make it happen. And he has been like such a great support to us in working through all the details of the website and, and all the marketing stuff. It, it's, it's just been a there's dream a lot having a him. Business. Like you have a passion yes. for cooking. Great. But yeah. there's a lot more. And Anthony will tell you, I just want to cook right, and right, love right. on people. Right. <laughs> and that is really what most business owners And the rest are. of us right. just right. kind of connect the dots all the time. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what's key is finding mm -hmm. the other people, you know, to connect yes. the dots. But it sounds almost I love the word serendipity. Yeah. You know, but it sounds it almost is. serendipitous, you know, the way yeah. that that it's come together. Yeah, I couldn't be happier. It was great timing um in terms of acquiring it. COVID wasn't the best of timing, but it brought us a restaurant. We never dreamed we'd be a restaurant. We always thought we'll just build more fire engines and just cook everywhere we can. <laughs> and now for people to be able to experience it on a daily basis, people some of our guests come to us weekly. We're like part of their lives now. And, and they expect, you know, to have that station house barbecue day in their week. And they, they get excited for it. It's so exciting to be able to, to, uh, to provide that for them. Yeah. I never dreamed we'd do that. I thought it would just be like event, 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 event. No, it's now it's relationships with guests and customers and just like becoming family with the community. And it's, it's grown so much bigger than I could have ever dreamed. Yeah. It, and so, you know, as far as I was, you know, adding in, you know, additional spots or adding in additional locations, you know, mm -hmm. how, do you look forward to doing that? Yes. Okay. So Anthony and Joshua are always on the hunt for new locations. What, and, so. you know, as far as a team, what advice or what, you know, what kind of tips have you learned as far as, you know, picking, I think too, you've had the, the fire state, you know, the fire community or yeah. the, you know, the county also to kind of help. But, and also another question is like, where did you start originally trying to get the people to, to tell them about what you were doing? 
Okay, so we got our start in Deland at that barn um, that was a venue that we thought it was going to be the rookie's mom's house when we pulled in, and it was actually like an oh, actual venue. Right. That's where we got. Okay. That's okay. where Anthony got his start catering and cooking okay. for people, like on a large scale. And then when his older partner uh, retired, his former captain retired, then we were um, trying I to okay. build a, our catering company over on this side of the state instead of having to drive to the land for everything, right? So we're doing like meal preps, we're doing small party gigs, we're doing everything that we can. Um, the, the food pantry, starting mm -hmm. that, and then Station House Barbecue became available for sale. And actually one of his fellow firefighters is the one who saw it and sent us to go see it. And he okay. wanted to invest in us doing that. And he did. So, <laughs> so when you show up to catering jobs, you have to yeah. have a team with you. You, you can't oh, just show yeah, up and, no. and do it yourself. It so takes what, a lot. what have you learned about hiring a great you know, team that's going to show up and represent and be there for you? Well, the first part is that you have to hire someone who's going to listen to the customer and write everything down in a way that the the kitchen staff is going to understand it to make that what the person's saying actually happen. Right. It's so important. It's, it's imperative. So to do have you find that there's a lot of miscommunication a, or could oh, be? Oh, all the time. But, you know, I mean, it's you we usually so work proactive. it out like the day right. of if we need to, if it comes down to it or, or before that. But like from the very start, if you can get in there in the in their minds, especially the brides and just figure out exactly what they want and put that on paper and, and have them like look at what you're thinking and everyone gets on the same page from the beginning, it comes out so, so much more smoothly. You got to have like a really awesome caterer, you know, like a um, uh, director to put like everything manager, together yeah, like yeah, to make sure that sense, everything's right. there. Yeah, project manager. So you've got your salesperson who's like best friends with the brides in order to get into their minds and, and figure out what they need and make it happen for them. And they are like the biggest cheerleader ever, right? And then you've got the person packing, you've got the person that's buying the food, making sure they buy enough food. And then that goes back to the person who's selling it. Did they get the right number? Because I've shown up to weddings. Luckily, we were catering on site for those, but I've showed up to weddings and there's 30 more seats sat at the dining tables and I call them. I I'll, usually I'll call the groom and say, I see 30 more seats than what <laughs> you, you ordered. You don't call the wife? I no, call I'm not going to bother the bride. But I see 30 more seats than what you ordered and what you paid for. Do you want us to continue cooking for them? Or are we just going to run out of food? And they're like, continue cooking. Sorry about that. I'm like, no problem. But it really helps if you have at the beginning, someone figuring out the numbers right. and like checking in with them and like, double check every single thing, triple check it all. And then you're going to be set up for success in terms of cooking. You got to have your pit master. You got to have your person like focused on sides and not burning the green beans because we burnt plenty of green beans in our day. <laughs> bet, and then you've yeah. got to have someone at the event making everything look awesome and pretty and perfect. And then you've got to have the servers. And usually we all just kind of everyone that's involved just jumps out and just starts serving too. And so that the everyone, you know, especially now with COVID that no one's touching any of the disposable serving utensils or anything like that. They just hold their plate or we'll hold it for him and give it to him at the end. So there's not a lot of touching. We take a lot of care and, and put a lot of time in, into orchestrating that so that it runs smoothly. We'll do two buffets if we have to, right. to keep them separated and, and not, you know, like yeah, there's so much we've had so to close together anymore. To yeah, definitely. With but Making you people need feel comfortable a full-blown team for it, yeah, for sure. And we have some really great servers who've started helping us out. I'm so grateful for them. And it's been a lot of fun because a couple of them are actually my old students oh, uh, right? from Leto. Yeah. Yep. We've kept in touch. And I said, you know, you want a job? You want to work with us? Yes. And so, bam. Yep. One of my uh, first gigs back in town after most of the stuff being in the land was at Leto. We did a pop-up buffet for like as many teachers as wanted to come 130 came and we fed them in half an hour because you know teachers do not have a lot of time and it was on one of their professional study days and we were going to do like the food truck outside and then just pop up a tent and put like we were going to do our buffet because we really wanted to try that but there were supposed to be other food trucks and then they canceled so there was like 1300 people in the building you usually count on like 10 percent actually staying there and eating the food most of them will pack their lunch and some of them will want to get out because like, can you blame them right right so and it's basically like a non student day so they want to spend as much time with their teacher friends as they can so <laughs> right. but a lot of them did come down and we just set up in the cafeteria and we served 130 teachers in 30 minutes with a double buffet open on both sides wouldn't be able to get away with that now in COVID right. times but back then it was awesome and and it was so cool to be able to do that at my home school with one of my former students i'll never forget that day yeah and just you know again it's in it's celebrating acknowledging that yep. and and kind of you know giving yourself permission to celebrate you know those those yes. successes those small successes all of those you know lead Absolutely. us and keep us going yeah you know for because 
it, it's that's what it's all about is yep. is that experience that that you felt at that moment yep. the feelings the moments yes yeah. well, it's been wonderful to have the contacts that we both have since neither of us have lived anywhere else ever <laughs> oh, <laughs> to I be bet. able to yeah. like call people especially when i need sponsors for things like that's a big thing i've been trying to do this year for the teachers is to feed them as much as possible mm -hmm. so if a school calls me i'll ask them what what can you do and then how much do i need to get sponsored and i will find sponsors and make sure that those teachers eat because we want to yeah. feed them. Yeah, sure that, that is that. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> of course. I, and that's just, you know, because a lot of that's just awesome that you're going out and looking for mm -hmm. for the sponsors, you know, yep. to kind of help. And and instead of saying, well, could you find a sponsor, you know, that we or we can help do something. <laughs> no, that, you know, I'll it's find you a sponsor. being creative. Right. Absolutely. And, and it's building those relationships. And I think sometimes, you know, like, well, I know all the time. One, one of the things that we focus on is building relationships mm -hmm. with edge. We, we, we take pride in it. We're not transactional. You know, yeah. it, it's really about building uh, relationships, not necessarily with, with expectations of anything happening today. I mean, you just never know where, mm -hmm. where something's going to go. And I think when you make uh, just genuine, yeah. you know, relationships that way yeah. and, and you start to build, everybody will do everything for mm -hmm. one another. And it's, it's really, sure. and I've seen it in action and I've seen it, seen it work and it, it could be a really beautiful thing. And in yes. Tampa Bay is, you know, I that's, know. it's, 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 you know, and I was reminded of that, you know, through my experience with what happened with my son, but also mm -hmm. I think, you know, watching the community come together the way that they have through COVID and everything that we've done this last year and a half, it, so many amazing angels, you know, yes. that, that are really stepped up to, to make sure and, and fill a void. And thankfully, yeah. we all have passions that, yeah. that are close to our hearts that pull us in these directions mm -hmm. that, that all help. I was right. scrolling this morning on social media and I saw this one woman, you know, actively she, she's um, uh, like uh, against like, human trafficking. You know, she's yeah. she's and, and I'm thankful to her for, yes. for for that being so close to her heart. She's definitely yes. an advocate and a champion. Um, and, and but then, you know, you have the teachers, you know, I you know, it's something that triggers with me, obviously, is. Um, innovators and and dreamers, mm -hmm. but but also uh, I think anytime you're an innovative and a dreamer and you take risk, you're so close to um, being homeless. You have no idea. I think when you go yeah. through anyway. So so the homeless community is definitely something that yeah. that is because I you know as a single mom as you you know when you take anyway it can happen to any of us. Yeah. And um, so that that I hope to help do yeah. more for well the homeless community is so grateful when we bring meals mm -hmm. to them um, i have a few like very brave people who are just also on fire for jesus and i can just call them and say you know i've got 30 extra meals can you take them to a homeless camp and they'll do that and it's amazing I'd, like basically go hunt them down and come back with like these stories and just like in tears can't even tell me the stories right then because they're just like so overtaken by the opportunity to give them back something well and i can only imagine a lot i feel like so much happens universally and mm -hmm. energy wise that that i can only imagine those meals that are given yeah i can you know that person receiving you yes. just have no idea what they could potentially be going through right. or mentally kind of be dealing with yes and you don't know when their last to be okay or when right you know you you just you really have no idea what people are dealing with yeah and you know it's great that we're able and society is i think more allowing us to talk about mm -hmm. things that we've been through uh, because you know, for so long it was taboo in a sense. Right. You didn't talk about, uh, right. and you didn't want to ask for help. You well, didn't you want to be weakness. shamed, yeah, or like avoided or be awkward. But now it's like if if you can tell your truth, then people are going to respect you. Mm -hmm. So well, you're going to inspire someone else and, too, and other so other people will yeah. grow, grow, draw strength from you. I think that's what. Uh, it's interesting that when I started my career early on, you know, being in my latter 40s now, but but being you know, late 20s, even in, I guess in the 30s, that's when for me it was all about what you know what kind of car I can buy, my Prada handbags, my you know my BMW, you know your half million dollar home, you know what and 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 it was oh I think we get caught up in that lifestyle and I think sometimes well for me it was the real estate market crash mm -hmm. that then took that away and everything that we owned and th I am so thankful for that and it's so funny it, it, but it's great to be able to say that now and look back on right. that and you know it, had that not happened I would not be sitting here today so right. you but, wouldn't have been able to discover your strengths no and but it all you know it set the path and led me mm -hmm. to where I am but it, well we talk about this a lot you know sometimes those those very hard things in our life are blessings in disguise yeah. so but you have to go through it and come out on the other side 
And that's not easy for everyone to do. And I hope that by being here and, and sharing our stories and our determination that other people will also realize that, that they can do it too. Um, and, you know, we could plan, regardless, those bad end curves are going to come. We just yeah. have to help each other get right. through them. So that's what I started to say. I do this all the time. <laughs> I was back then, you know, I, I didn't share these stories. I didn't share what was going on in my life. In fact, when I was going to get divorced after forever, the girls that were close to me didn't even know that I was having trouble in my marriage because I didn't talk. I mean, the couple closest did. The others did not. But it's interesting uh, as I, you know, here I am 15, 20, you know, so many years later, but I will share with you in a minute everything that I've been through because yeah. I'm proud of it yeah. and everything that I've been willing to sacrifice and do in order to be here. And I, I hope that I can inspire others. You, you know, do. You inspired do me. I don't know if you remember, but I had a very low point, too, along the way just recently. And you came right out and told me everything you had been through and said, you will get through this. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I will. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> and I hadn't even met you. So, <laughs> I, You know, and, but I think it's it's being brave and owning, I guess, too, it has a lot to do with confidence and, and loving ourselves. And when you uh, are at that point, when you finally get there and you're, you're good um, and internally and have some peace of mind, then you're able to then, uh, and I tell you what, not that I do not have a lot to yet go through, but it's great to be 10 years in the, down the road. And then, you know, and, and because you get to a certain point and I, and all these People in this last issue will tell yeah. you that after so many years of overcoming mm -hmm. everything that you've been faced with, you just eventually know you're going to continue to face things, mm -hmm. but you're going to continually overcome them. And you don't yes. know how you're going to do it. You just know because yes. you've already done it. If you look at your track record, so you end up losing a lot less sleep mm -hmm. later as you go. And it is hard because I think a lot of times we focus more on those that we take care of, right, in our circles more so than we do ourselves. For mm -hmm. me, it was always about making sure, you For know, sure. everybody else is okay. But, yes. um, but at the end of the day, self-care and taking care of ourselves is priority too. It's, 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 it's yeah. important. And yeah. that took me a while to learn. Yeah. You know, but Even just over the past year. Um, if you would have like told me at this point last year, the different things, different struggles we would have overcome, the amount of people we would have been able to help, I would have told you you were crazy, you know, and I had tons of faith last year, but now it's just so much stronger because I've had the opportunity to like discover inside myself, my strength. And a lot of that's due to my husband because he is like super filled with faith and, and he doesn't fear it. He just knows like, if it gets taken away from me, it's because God wanted it to, and I'll find something else to do, you know, and right. he's he's got his career he loves his career he's proud of his career and he wants to do more and this is his way to do more so i think that just being able to take that confidence in yourself yeah. and apply it to each situation that would be great like for an example um towards um in the holidays um like around thanksgiving he was approached by um a group of fabulous people um they collect wish lists from foster kids from like nine different agencies will send them the wish list of children in foster care hoping that they can put you know and make it into an ornament put it on a tree and hoping someone will come and adopt it and then that that person will bring back <laughs> right. the um the gifts that, for that list for that child and someone came into our restaurant we had just opened and said can we put a tree up in like 50 ornaments would you mind and anthony's like that's all you got I love it. He's like, bring me all of them. Stop looking. And we'll focus right now on getting these, you know, adopted, getting these children taken care of. And we did. We got so many more up until the very last day. Places that had said, yes, they'll put up the tree. We were taking the ornaments that they did not get donated. I had taped them to the window so people didn't have to wait for us to be open. I'm like, just text me if you're going to adopt any of these kids so that oh, I can take them down. And it was just like bone chilling the amount of stuff that we were able to get for for kids who need it who i've need seen that love. i've seen in with my own eyes what you're capable of putting together <laughs> I, it, it's remarkable and so i can only imagine what yeah, you were able really to do special and that's all because he's he's got the faith in him he's he's got god is, resides within him and he knows that nothing's impossible with god we're gonna do this and i'm not stopping Thankfully, certain people are here on, yeah. on, on, you know, in this realm and on this earth, you know, to, to provide light yeah. and hope and inspiration to others. And, uh, and without them, uh, you know, oh goodness, 
I, I kind of say, you know, what, without hope, what do you have? Well, if you have an option, you know, hope mm -hmm. or it's doom, it is, yeah. you know, always choose hope. And always. there are so many resources out there, uh, uh, obviously Edge Media Hub being one of them, uh, where us crazy people come together. It's so joke. My daughter will say, why do you call yourself crazy? But I say that in a good way. I mean, you have to be a little crazy. To, You've got to a be fire a, in you. It's yeah. wonderful to, to see it, experience it. If there's more like you, we want to be part of that too. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it just, it, it, to be here and and I think to also when you uh, to sacrifice and make commitments, you know, I guess maybe it's like when you're younger and you pay for something yourself, right? You're always a, so much more appreciative of that yeah. because you paid for it, you worked to have it. Same thing, you know, here I am after all these years, yeah. uh, you know, I, I I put my dues in and, and I'm yeah, just so, and I think that's where you learn to kind of be, uh, I, I'm better to myself, you know, I, I try mm -hmm. to acknowledge um, and, and I have learned to enjoy the journey yeah. because it's really not so much about a destination. Although, yeah, we, we all, we all have a plan. We all have an end game strategy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but I'm enjoying each and every day and it, it, we have yes. to, you have to be yes. in the present and in yeah. the now. And I'm not saying it's easy, you know, no, it's absolutely being not. like a community you leader easy? Or, yeah. go, or go, go, you're person in the wrong, with fire right? that people flock to, to, you know, guide and, and give back. It's not easy no, it's for not. sure. But it's so rewarding that you're going to keep doing it. How could you not? No, it's, you know, with with every good, there there are some downsides. Right. It, it is tough to be uh, that, uh, that yes, that that person that's always picking up and inspiring others and leading others. And and it's joke. I joke. Uh, my best friend has me on her phone as a motivational guru. But, <laughs> it, you know, who does the motivational guru go to when they need it? And I say, God. You know, that that is my motivational guru. So we're, we have a minute left. We're going to run out of time. Ah! Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you for this being here. Awesome. You are awesome. You. Uh, Station House Barbecue, uh, definitely go on to the website. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, anything that, that we can do to help, uh, we can help, re you know, just Allison, thank you. Thank you. So, wow, it goes so fast. Um, before I run out of time, I just wanted to thank Allison again for everything that she does for our community, for everything she's done for my family, and everything that she will continue to do uh, for our uh, community. So uh, definitely support them and visit stationhousebarbecue.com. You can find out more about getting involved. And in the meantime, uh, check out edgemediahub.com. You can subscribe to our magazines. You can subscribe to our newsletters just to keep informed and up to date on everything that's going on. Uh, also, uh, place your business front and center in our second annual celebration of women coming out later this spring. So again, so much to stay up with. Thank you again for being here. We'll see you next time. Never stop dreaming. Thank you. <laughs>